Tears of the Kingdom marks the 12th main entry to the epic fantasy franchise The Legend of Zelda and serves as a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild set around five years after the conclusion. I think I have to start by actually expressing a slight quandary as I felt quite disappointed that the game was as similar to Breath of the Wild as it is. And yet I feel that it's a major contributing factor to what makes the game so great. Seriously, a lot of it is exactly the same. Instead of Calamity, you have Gloom, which functions extremely similarly. The world of Hyrule is almost exactly the same, with a few exceptions. A lot of the food ingredients are the same, the cooking is the same, the combat is the same, the stables and horses are the same, the towns and villages are the same, heck, even the Blood Moons are exactly the same, just with a slightly modified video and a new voiceover. Even all the characters are the same, although this actually contributes to a rather excellent theme of growth, as a lot of the major players in this title were either side or main players in Breath of the Wild. I felt disappointed partially because, as I said in my Breath of the Wild review, that I would prefer them to return back to the old formula. But also, at first glance, when I buy a game for £60 and it feels like a clone of a game I already have, I feel ripped off. But then I got into all the new stuff and a lot of my disappointment ebbed away. And that's because Breath of the Wild was great and pretty much everything one could complain was wrong with it is fixed in Tears of the Kingdom. The story is far more fleshed out, the shrines are significantly more engaging and the addition of the sky world and the depths world not only pose new and interesting challenges but also kept things fresh gameplay wise as when a particular world started to feel tiring it was easy just to set your sights on the next world. These other worlds also feed into what I believe is this game's greatest strength which is its atmosphere. The game sets an amazing, epic atmosphere right from the start and manages to hold on to it with a vice-like grip all the way to the dramatic and gripping finale. This is done in part with liberal but crucially not overuse of the game's depths world, which between the gloomy atmosphere, pun intended, the difficulty in seeing and therefore navigating and the gloom mechanic which semi-permanently blocks off health from being recovered until either a way is found to dispel it or the player leaves the depths entirely. This really adds not only to the foreboding atmosphere but also manages to make every trip to the depths feel like a dangerous adventure which I do believe is a primary focus of Zelda in general. Where this atmosphere really peaks is in the temples a very, very welcome return since their absence in Breath of the Wild. I have to say that thematically, visually, sonically, and again in terms of atmosphere, they get top marks from me. Unfortunately, I can't help but note that mechanically, the temples are actually exactly the same as the Divine Beasts, just without the gimmick of being able to move the dungeon. Seriously, find and press these four to six points within the dungeon there's no functional difference as much as these temples are a marked improvement on the divine beasts each having their own unique themes and i'll say it again incredible atmospheres i would still dearly like to see a return to the older formula of proper linear or semi-linear temples changing the subject now I do feel that overall, the difficulty of Tears of the Kingdom is a marked increase from Breath of the Wild. For example, I didn't really have any issues with the shrines in Breath of the Wild, where I was stumped on a few in Tears of the Kingdom. I feel a large part of this is due to the new mechanics being quite complex, especially when compared to Breath of the Wild's relatively simple ones. The ability to fuse objects into weapons and shields is a little confusing at first, but it's explained well by the UI, while the Ultra Hand ability, coupled with the Zonai devices, opens almost endless possibilities for machines that can be built. Although I have to say that I did find the construction finicky and occasionally frustrating, 
especially before obtaining the upgrade that allows you to recreate a previously made creation with only a few clicks. This did once or twice create a situation where the game felt too clever for its own good, and maybe one or two of the puzzles felt a little on the side of obtuse, but overall the skill set felt pretty intuitive and really only added to the feeling of exploration. I have to say actually, I love the way the three game worlds are so nicely connected, from the sky to Hyrule, then dropping through certain rifts on Hyrule down to the depths below, with semi-regular roadblocks being placed in your way to force you to transition. But also thematically, in that you need items from wells on Hyrule to explore the depths, where you find Zonites, an ore which can be processed into things that make it easier to explore the sky. I really can't understate just how seamlessly these areas connect, and yet have wildly different atmospheres and challenges. Now, going into a little more depth on the story, I think the story is presented flawlessly, with a generous smattering of pre-rendered voice-acted cutscenes, along with another suite of memories to collect that add enormously to the narrative. Unlike the memories in Breath of the Wild, the memories in Tears of the Kingdom are far more important to the plot, but luckily are a lot less tiresome to collect, in my opinion. The antagonist, while his identity was hardly a surprise, is presented in a new and thematically frightening fashion that he immediately feels compelling and pretty believable too, especially once you learn what the memories have to tell you. This makes the finale even more epic, and I have to say, was a real treat, especially after the somewhat lame fake-out ending in the castle. The ending was also mechanically tight, although rather difficult in my opinion, without grinding for items that dispel gloom and use of a teleport mechanic which can only be unlocked by way of a fairly lengthy side quest. And finally, it would be remiss of me not to mention the voice acting, which feels like a marked improvement on Breath of the Wild, even though the voice actor for Zelda is clearly the same person. This can only mean that in actual fact, the problem with Breath of the Wild wasn't the voice acting, but was either the direction and or the script writing that let the character of Zelda down so much. In Tears of the Kingdom, she is significantly less annoying, more relatable, and frankly, more Princess Zelda-like, and I couldn't help but feel both relieved and impressed. In conclusion, I believe Tears of the Kingdom not only adds to what I would describe as a premium franchise, but it stands out as a marked improvement on the already stellar Breath of the Wild. Sure, maybe as a Zelda nerd, I would have preferred them to go for a story that wasn't so clearly outside conventional canon, but I suppose the YouTube theorists need something to talk about for the next five years. Seriously though, I genuinely think Tears of the Kingdom is better than Breath of the Wild. If you liked Breath of the Wild, this is a no-brainer. Seriously, why the hell haven't you played it already? But any fan of the franchise, or really any fan of this type of game, needs to play this. As yet again, Nintendo set the gold standard with Zelda. My only words of warning? If you didn't like Breath of the Wild, avoid this game like the plague. And although it wouldn't be impossible to love Tears of the Kingdom without playing Breath of the Wild, thematically and narratively, you'd be shooting yourself in the foot. Defo play Breath of the Wild first, if you haven't already. Aside from that though, seriously, please go out and buy The Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom.